I've got a selection of pan pastels here. I've had these for so long and I've hardly ever used them. And it's a real shame because they're not cheap, that they are quite expensive, um, the proper pan pastels. But there's quite a few people just lately using them on jelly plates. And I thought, you know what, that seems like a really good idea um, to get some use out of them and save them just going to waste. So I've got my five by seven jelly plate. I've got my pan pastels. I've got some um, sponge foam applicators that I'm going to use to put the pastels onto the plate. I've got some white acrylic paint. This is titanium white um, paint and a piece of acrylic here that I'm going to use my brayer just to get some paint on there. And I've got a selection of stencils. I'm not sure where they're all from. I believe this one is a Balsa Designs one. Um, this blue one with cogs on, I have absolutely no idea. I don't know where that one was from. This mandala is by That's Crafty. And this circular design is a deco art one. But, you know, use anything that you like. Try and choose a design, I think, that's got quite a bit of open space so that you can sort of, you'll get the full effect of the different colors of the pastels. So I'm just going to begin by popping my stencil onto the plate and applying some of the pan pastels through it. Once you've done that, you can lift your stencil off. Hang on to this because we can use this pastel that is actually on the stencil. So just pop that to one side. I'm going to pop a bit of this white acrylic paint onto my acrylic sheet just so that I can um, brayer it out into a thin layer. You want to use a pale color paint for this so that it, it, if you use something bright, it's going to affect the color of your pastel that shows through. So keep it quite pale, keep it quite neutral. You can experiment and, you know, different effects with different colors. Once you've got your even coat of paint, just put your piece of cardstock in. This is just some smooth white cardstock and press down evenly all over. And there's our first print. There's still um, a little pastel on the plate that I can see there. So I'm just gonna add another thin coat of paint over the top and just see if we can pull another print off there. There's our second one. And let's just see if we can get a third print. This I can still see, especially some yellow there. The yellow is very bright. And there's our third one. So now that we've pretty much cleared the plate, I mean, I can still see a little, but this third print here is, is really quite pale. We can take our stencil with the pastel on the one side, flip it over, press that down on our plate, take some other colors of the pastels. This time I'm going to use the, the pinks and the purples because I didn't use those first time. And like before, we'll just cover the whole area with colour. A 
lift that back off, move it to one side and get a bit more paint. And not only do you get the colours that we've just applied, you then get colour transfer that was originally on the stencil. So again, really nice effect there. There looks to be plenty of colour left for another print or two. That's the good thing about the pan pastels. I know they're expensive, but they're so highly pigmented, very finely ground. So I'm glad I found a use for them. There we have a second print. And a third. There probably is enough for a fourth on there, but I really don't want a fourth one um, using this stencil. So I'm just going to clean off my plate and I can start afresh with a different design. So next up, I want to use this circular design from Deco Art. So just like before, placing my stencil onto my jelly plate. This time I'm going to apply the colors to sort of fit the pattern radiating out from the middle.
on to the actual purpose of this, which is to create another word card to hang in my frame. The word I've chosen for this month is passion and I'm going to be using this stamp I've had for a while. I'm not entirely sure whether Visible Image still do this. They do still keep some of their older sentiments in stock. I'm not sure, but do it with passion or not at all. Very appropriate for creative people. So I'm going to be using that stamp. Here's my little template for my hanging card. I will link, um, this will be linked to the playlist that I have for all of these cards. I do one each month. I'm going to use this print, I've decided. I like this, the bright colours, it sort of fits with the word passion. Um, I really like this. So I'm going to trim this to size, which is five and a quarter by three and a quarter inches, punch a couple of holes in and stamp my sentiment on and that will really be as, as simple as this is so I'll go away and trim this get it ready and I'll be back again so I've trimmed that to size I've put a couple of black reinforcing rings on I use this we are memory keepers punch to create those and I'm just going to stamp my sentiment on here using archival link so just using the stamp press today in case I need to go over it a couple of times. I'm just going to line my sentiment up in the middle nice and straight. And inking it up with Jet Black Archival Ink. And there we have, I think I might just go around the edge with a little um, black distress ink. So I'll just grab that. I think this will just frame it nicely. A really um, simple card this time because it was sort of more about the technique this week. So there's my finished inspiration card for this month. I'll just move this out of the way. And I still have a whole pile of prints um, here that I can use some of the sort of second and third pulls. I've got plenty of those. I have made a few cards with some of my favourite prints as well. So this one, you know, some Stampers Anonymous stamps and chit chat stickers that I've just added a die cut word to. This is just a collage image. This is from Courtney Diaz's Patreon um, and a chit chat word. A Vera Lane Studio Digi Stamp coloured and a snarky small talk sticker. And one of the paper dolls figures again with another snarky sentiment sticker. So as you can see, very versatile backgrounds, great for card making. These I shall probably cut up and use for ATCs or tag backgrounds. And this one to hang in my frame this month. And, you know, I can look at that throughout the whole of June. As always, if you enjoyed this, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more from me. And I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye.